Was it your first gig here in in in, in first on job. television? I, I mean, I had I had done a pilot uh, before that, and you know, a half hour. You know, you're going to be on Evening at the Improv, or you're going to be on Caroline's Comedy, right. or you're going to do seven minutes in front of a wall. Um, but I had done a pilot for MTV that didn't go, um, and then this was just like. You know, I just felt like Charlie with a golden ticket. Like, I was a huge fan of the show, and I just felt like I was so over the moon happy that um, I, it sort of suspended all reality. Like, it never never occurred to me that I might be fired or that right. the audience might loathe me after <laughs> j- their beloved host of Greg Kinnear. Like, I was going to, did they, did they dis, did, again, the internet wasn't as strong then, but did you still oh, get you, feedback that you, they were mad you were there and he wasn't? Every day, uh, well, like, you know, every day on the show or virtually every day, we, we had a, a, a voicemail number and then, you know, we would give out the address for people to, and so it was, you know, analog audience feedback. Um, mm. uh, you had to buy a stamp and go to a fucking post <laughs> To tell office, you that they you hate know, you. Or at least have a touch tone. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're on television, somebody is in love with you and somebody wants to gouge your eyes out <laughs> like the fucking mountain in game of thrones uh-huh. like it's just that's just it it you know tv yeah. polarizes but it um you know i kind of learned pretty quickly like well i don't i mean there's going to be people on both sides. Of the, it's going to be good people. Yeah, on both sides. Both sides huh? Oh, oh, okay. so, oh um, that's what he meant. Yeah, that and ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy uh, Dore. Hey. Um, <laughs> so, uh, um, so we, you know, I, I, um, I don't know. We, ne- we never. I mean, I was there for over four years, four and a half years, and nobody. I never had a note session. Not one. Wow. Ever. Isn't it, come on. No, no, no one from that network ever fucking sat me down <laughs> and talked to me about anything <laughs> ratings material you know tone direction not nothing N- never we i had an executive producer we showed our scripts to her uh, towards the tail end of my time there i became one of the executive producers we didn't show our script to anybody the only time that i ever had someone an executive from the network talk to me we had um so we had we had gotten a clip. Uh, uh, um, uh, God, this was uh, one of my later years there, and Dustin Hoffman had done a junket for the movie. I think it was like Sphere or something. And for some reason, in this junket interview, he got the giggles, and he just couldn't stop laughing. And out of the blue, we get this like tape from his publicist, like Dustin Hoffman thought you guys would have fun with this, and we were like. It's not a talk show clip. Like, wait, what? What are we supposed to do with this? And we were sitting in the writer's room and somebody goes, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Dustin Hoffman sent us this clip. Therefore, Dustin Hoffman knows we exist. (laughs) Therefore, we have to have Dustin Hoffman on this show. And we were, all, you know, it was like back then, you're just like, 100% right, we're all in agreement, steam right ahead. And, and we could not come up with a reason to get him on. Like we knew, and, and one of my very young writers, Laura Kierlin at the time, um, I think was once an intern or an AP and became a writer, but she goes, that's gonna take something drastic. I mean, that's, that's, that's gonna require like a hunger strike. And literally I just went, we're adjourned, we're doing a hunger strike. Like, and we just, that was it. And we just went on the air the next day and I announced that I was going on a hunger strike until Dustin Hoffman appeared on the show. It was never thought through. Right. There was no payoff of like, when we get him, this is what we'll do. If he never responds, this is how we'll handle it. It was just, if you build it, he will come kind of thing. Right. And so, we just started mining that for comedy, and every day I would wear larger and larger clothing. <laughs> we, we got a, Maybe I, that's I, why they bought you that leather coat. <laughs> I, I sat in this little purple chair, and we got a big version yeah, of yeah. it, you know. And and I and um, I started trying to make myself look, you know, sunken, and and, and you know. Meanwhile, I, I probably fucking gained five pounds during the <laughs> hunger strike, but um, and started doing interviews, like release to press release, and just you know calling like you know, getting blurbs in Entertainment Weekly and Us Magazine. And um, probably like eight or nine days into it, 
I think it was Fran Shea, the woman who would hire me, the, the woman that ran programming there, just like pulled me into her office in the hallway. Like I was just walking by and she goes, John, and it was one of those like, <laughs> um, and I, I walk back in her office and she goes, you guys have a plan for <laughs> what happens if he doesn't respond, right? And I was like, absolutely, yeah. you know? And it was literally the first I had ever thought of it. And, <laughs> and um, <laughs> you know, walk back into the writer's room like, you guys were fucked. Um, <laughs> and then like a day or two later, somebody walked up to me in the hallway, just ashen and went, Dustin Hoffman is on the phone and he wants to talk to you. And I was like, oh my God, this is happening. Like full out of body experience. And I sit down in this executive's office and they put him on speaker and he goes, all right, what are we going to do? Oh, you don't know. And I literally just like, it was one of those, like, I will just start speaking and we will find out what I come up with. Um, and, uh, and I was basically, I was like, well, I am on my deathbed from the hunger strike and I am saying goodbye to the audience because I'm about to die and you walk in and I'm like, oh my God, you did it. You, you came to save me and uh, you're actually there to serve me with a restraining order. <laughs> and, um, and he goes, all right, I'll be there Friday. <laughs> like that was it. Like it, and, and then like the morning of, he goes, he just calls again and goes, I'm bringing John Lovitz, so have something for him, too. And we were just like, yeah, uh, fuck yeah, we're going to have. I got a whole five-episode arc with John Lovitz. Lovitz. I mean, it was, um, it was, yeah, it was nuts. There was no, we didn't know what we were doing. Right. Man. But it was funny. That's the best. It's the greatest thing that the I. The idea that you, got, you never had a note is the greatest sentence in the history of show business. It was, it. Uh, uh, if I'm being truthful, it ruined me for the rest of right. this industry. Yes. Because it was the Garden of Eden. And, and then, you know, I left a short time later and went to ABC to do a pilot. And I just remember being like, to my other writers, like, hey, man. Who's that guy in the shitty suit that's never written a joke in his life who's telling us how to do comedy? And they were like, "Where? what what, what world do you live in? That's right. this business. And I was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Walk me through this slowly. And, and To hear the whole conversation, subscribe for free on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts or visit nevernotfunny.com.